talk to us about the Crusades. Uh, certainly the Crusades kind of get demonized in Hollywood and uh, in other places from people who don't really understand what they were. Yeah. There were all the good things that happened to the Crusade. Mm-hmm. There were certain absolutely abominable things that happened, especially in the Fourth Crusade. Right. Help us understand that. So so Deus Volt, God wills it, right? This is the, the cry of the Crusaders. Um, there was a desire to reclaim the Holy Land, the, where, where Jesus came from. That's why the Pope sent these Crusaders and they and, were... And, and, and you might be saying this, so I'm sorry to cut you off, but it's no, not, no, not just to reclaim, right? It's It, it was almost like a uh, it, it, it was it was to defend the Christians who were being attacked in the Holy Land right. too by the Muslims. Yeah, and yeah. it's and it was certainly a. I mean, I, I personally think there's there's this balance. The the Islam and Judaism are going to be fighting over the Temple Mount for all time, right? And so there's this there's this physical piece of land that that there that there is people are being killed and fighting over it, and it'll be that way probably forever. I think I love the fact that Christianity should be able to kind of take a step back from that and mm-hmm. say, we're focusing on a heavenly genealogy and a heavenly Jerusalem. So so our, our goal is is heaven. So we are all the chosen people of God now that Jesus Christ died and rose. We are welcomed into his body. And the body of Christ is a heavenly body of Christ that involves human people. Still, my understanding is the uh, it was a responsive attack. So it wasn't like the Muslims were set up there and the Christians were like, let's go take it. Right. It was that the Christians were set up there and they were being invaded by Muslims and the Crusades were a response to that. Yeah. When exactly that invasion happened, I don't know. Mm-hmm. So you might know more than that I than I not, do. I, yeah. um, but this I do know sort of a... the, the, crusade, the Crusades, as much as it's demonized, yeah. did have a good purpose. I mean, I, I believe that, that the Holy Spirit was working through the church in a general way okay. when it came to the Crusades. But the problem that the Orthodox have is that during the Fourth Crusade, that, that went through Constantinople, there was an obvious knowledge by the Crusaders that the Orthodox who were there were not Catholic. Yeah. Now explain this to us in all of its gory detail, because yeah. I want Catholic to be absolutely, yeah. I don't want anyone defending this yeah. this crusade, we, we, at least we, some of the things right. that happened here. And so. this is one of the subtleties within the Crusades we need to understand. Yeah. So so the Orthodox who saw themselves, and I, I, don't, I don't mean to build them up either, but into a way I shouldn't, but the Orthodox saw themselves as as Christians united with the Catholics against the Muslim invasion. Mm. But then you had the Catholic Crusaders come in who saw themselves as separate from the Orthodox, even though they were Christians, and, and they just, you know, raped and pillaged and killed. And it was it was one of the, in a human way, you know, um, d- pretty much destroyed all the churches and, and, and left Constantinople. And explain sacked. what they did in the churches. My uh, understanding yeah. was that they were like raping of Eastern yeah. nuns, even on the in the church. Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was it was horrifying, and it was because there was this sense of us and them. Right, and to be clear, it's not like the Pope went go and rape. No, absolutely not. <laughs> so we're not saying yeah. that you can deem you can sort of criticize the Fourth Crusade without having to say the church's authority is right. under threat, and and without saying this is this is the Pope's fault or this is the Roman Catholic Church's fault. Right. Um, but that's just what happened. Now. Um, within that, I mean, there there is many times where where Catholics have killed Orthodox and Orthodox have killed Catholics. It, it's a it's a horrible storied history of martyrdoms on both sides. Um, when union happens, God willing, it's going to be very interesting to say, for instance, like Alexis Toth. We can get into this if you want, but in the American Byzantine Catholic Church, um, Alexis Toth. Uh, I don't know what that is. So he was a he was a Byzantine Catholic priest okay. who who was a widow widower. And, and he was in before we had our own eparchies or we had our own, di- own dioceses here in the United States um, to get another priest for a parish. He had to go to the local Roman Catholic bishop and say, can you yeah. please write to Rome and have them have Rome since we don't have our own dioceses send us priests from Ukraine, from Slovakia and send them here to the U.S. Well, he showed up at the office of Bishop John Ireland in Minneapolis, St. Paul, which is where he was and and. And Bishop Ireland just said, aren't you one of those Byzantine Catholic priests? And he goes, yes, I'm a widow. I was married. And 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 for now about 30, 40 years, there had been this tension where the Roman Catholics thought that the Byzantine Catholics were causing scandal because right. of their married priesthood. Yeah. So they wrote so they wrote to Rome and said, we need an authoritative document from the Eastern Congregation that says Byzantine priests in the United States cannot be married. So when that documentation, documentation came from Rome, it had already happened in the 1890s. It happened again in the 1929. Um, 
many, many, many of the married Byzantine Catholic priests switched to Orthodoxy. So, I'm sorry, how, how do we get from the Fourth Crusade to this? So, so um, well, that, that's, that's the, um, the, the differences in between the Latins and, and the Romans. Oh, I see. So that, that happened in the Fourth Crusade. And the reason why, gotcha. why these crusaders themselves felt that they could sack was right. because of these real— They saw, they, these, they saw it as heresy. Yeah, they your saw liturgy it as looks schism. different. You're married. You celebrate exactly. with leavened bread. Exactly. All these different issues that led to the, the mm-hmm. Great Schism in 1054. And, and now, just a, a couple hundred years later, or a hundred years later, is enabling this this us and them tension. And so when when union does happen, here's all the human things we have to deal with. Mm. So the I mean, you still talk to some Greek Orthodox today, and and you will say, why aren't you in union with the Catholics? They'll say the Crusades. Yeah. That that'll be on the top of their list. It's it's a very emotional thing. How dare they came in and really destroyed our homeland? I mean, I Constantinople was where our church from. That's where we get the name Byzantium, Byzantine Church. I mean, and the Byzantine Orthodox too. They they, they saw that as as an immense attack. So there's right. this human dimension. And the, the reason these attackers did this is because of the differences because they the thought schism. were illegitimate exactly you know, like married priests the, the, these are this is not the true church gotcha. these are not apostolic christians and and this schism. i mean with the author i mean i'm sure there's been orthodox <clears throat> fighting catholics did they just show up to a bunch of peaceful orthodox and destroy the no, church? no i think it was just the History's crusaders always were complicated so much more militarily powerful and and also you know the there was a bit of constantinople was kind of under constant attack yeah you know um from barbarians from the, the you know the slav areas you know but from um from the muslims of course and so i think they 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 just felt if, if we're again if we're looking for good they, mm. they were seeing oh here's someone that's going to be on our side and they weren't mm. and so this this very it's very emotional just like the alexis toth story i was telling yep. you about like with him he left he he is a saint in the orthodox church for leaving the catholic church and so it's like he you know the the imposition of rome this evil rome on us telling we cannot have our authentic tradition of married priesthood so he left and, and joined the orthodox so they now have him as a saint for kind of sticking with the ancient traditions now when we have union is alexis toth can be a saint mm. in the universal church Oof. and what are we going to do about the crusades i mean there's things like that these are the these are the emotional aspects of the separation of the churches that we're going to have to somehow deal with when this comes back together again but the crusades is is one of the big ones one of the big emotional um reasons for separation that we're going to have to somehow deal with and so there are, there are certain again. things that that catholics ought to defend as they speak with um orthodox mm-hmm. and try to bring them into the church i'm not sure if you would see it that way but this isn't one of them you know what I'm saying? Like the, the, defending oh. the Fourth Crusade is not one of them. As we oh. interact with our Orthodox brothers, we might feel the need right. to defend absolutely everything. And right, correct. There needs to be subtleties there. And yeah. and John Paul, thank God, Pope yeah, John Paul II, yeah. he actually apologized. He he Publicly. he made a public apology for the sacking of Constantinople. And and it was we need that. And and so much in our faith is subtlety. I mean, I'm, I've been a priest yeah. now 15 years. Like so much of it is saying Nuance, we want to be black and white exactly. Yeah. And now within the social media world. It's like everything is black and white. I, I'm going to be hardcore because we also need that. We also need some black and yeah. white in the church Especially nowadays. when we feel like we're not getting much direction. Right, right. It, and it, we just, yeah. We're we, flailing. We, yeah, we're flailing. Yeah. Flailing. And the, I think yeah, the temptation is to forsake nuance for the sake of clarity. Exactly. And sometimes that goes too far. So we need to pray for wisdom. I've realized wisdom and maturity. Those two things to say, what does is, what is a wise, mature person do? They see the subtlety and they're black when they need to be black and white. And they're yes. gray when they need to be gray. And yes. that they have the wisdom and the maturity to say, this is how it is. So I think we can, we as Catholics can say... Um, the Crusades were done for a very specific reason, and God was there in many aspects of it. Sacking of Constantinople was not one of them. Yeah. Th- th- and, and we can say, look, I mean, every Christian church knows knows that we are kind of by nature hypocrites, right? We are called to something that we will never attain. We're called to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect, and yet we are, we'll always be sinners. Mm-hmm. So th- with, within that, we, we, we should understand human weakness better than we do, even among other Christians. And so I hope the Orthodox one day can say they've apologized for that aspect of the fourth crusade and so we are going to offer forgiveness and once we've offered forgiveness kind of corporate forgiveness for the for the corporate sin now we can move forward with the other issues that are still causing this what was the response from the orthodox churches in to john paul ii's apology um because sometimes when i think of the orthodox i just think of like a pissed off group of people that aren't interested in union yeah and don't want anything to do with this yeah i have this like theory and i think it's accurate that it's always the underdog that's upset with the bigger guy yeah canada doesn't want to be america but america thinks canada's cute (laughs) new zealanders hate australians we think new zealanders are fine 
<laughs> right. The Orthodox are always upset at Catholics. We're yeah. like, well, basically, we believe a lot of the same stuff. Right. And and it's and that's the squeaky wheel gets the oil. You know, so the, there's a the 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 people that are the loudest and kind of the most. Um, you know, there's a, oh, I see. a great story where where the uh, you have the especially the the Russian monks on Mount Athos and and um, Patriarch Bartholomew, who's the, currently the ecumenical patriarch. He knew John Paul; they worked mm. together very well. Um, he and he's he he's very solid in his orthodoxy, of course, thank God. Um, but he is also desirous of union if it's done well. Mm. And I, I I like the way he he phrases these things. It was very similar to what John Paul was saying. John Paul actually, if you remember, said. I am open to reanalyzing the way that I live out my primacy and supremacy in the church. I want theologians to debate this. And unfortunately, the devil was there and only two or three theologians really threw themselves into the work of saying, here's how we can, can without giving any of any of our traditions, be authentic to canon law and to the reality of the Catholic Church. Here's how we can yeah. phrase differently the administrative authority of the Catholic Church that came from Trent, that came from Vatican I. Here's how we can reanalyze those statements in a way that will hopefully fully be okay, understandable, and the way that the Orthodox can embrace it. You know, I feel like, uh, you know, after the, the the confusion of the Second Vatican Council, having a faithful, saintly pope, I feel like we Catholics are like, all the authority, you have it yeah, all, because these right. guys, we're all crazy, we need right. you to lead us, Yes, sort of leaning into this ultramontanism uh, thing. Now we got Pope Francis. I feel like a lot of faithful Catholics are like, no, no, divide the right. authority. We don't want you doing that. And it's making us be mature and wise. It's making us say, what is the proper way to see the Pope? Yeah. Like, 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 what is the proper way of listening to his Wednesday audiences, interviews on airplanes, exactly. and, and yeah. then documents, <laughs> tweets, and simple yeah. documents, tweets, like, like, it's making us reanalyze yeah. the fact that he's human, but also, you know, a pope. Mm -hmm. um, another another issue the Orthodox have is is because of this hierarchy. They say when he asked the title of the Vicar of Christ, if Christ, if the Holy Spirit proceeded from Christ as well, then they think that the Catholics say that Christ has a certain certain authority over the Holy Spirit because of that hierarchy. Uh. So therefore. If, if we call the Pope the Vicar of Christ, therefore he decides where the Holy Spirit goes and where the Holy Spirit doesn't. Oh, that's interesting. And he's giving himself that order. So all of these are, I don't, mm. I don't, I see these as a bit of a stretch. Many Orthodox might argue with me on that, but it's, to me, it's again, kind of looking for trouble, but, but that's where, that's where someone like John Paul, who seemed just like dad, you know, he seemed like grandpa and I'm, mm. I'm from the John Paul generation. So it was like, I will give you all the power. Like I, I, I would follow Archbishop Charles Chaput mm -hmm. to anything. I mean, I, I I probably put him on a pedestal because I I, I was, knew him in Denver for a while, and I I love everything he does. And I think, but when I get to know him better, there's things that every human being has that say, okay, I I need to. There yeah. are certain disagreements that we have, and there's a subtlety there that I just can't listen to everything he says and say mm -hmm. yes, you know, mm -hmm. everything you say, speak more. And so I think that maturity and wisdom needs to come about in this understanding and the Orthodox. Um, need to see that in us and we need to see that in them. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you will absolutely love the full interview. So click right there to enjoy the whole thing. Also, a big thanks to these groups who made that interview possible. Learn more in the show notes below about these guys. They're absolutely incredible and honored to have them as sponsors. Oh, and also if you haven't subscribed yet, click subscribe and then that bell button. That way YouTube will be forced to let you know when we put out more content.